Namaste, Ajayanti Ji. I'm very happy that I uh, have been and I express my gratitude. I'm very delighted to Welcome. share the screen with you. Uh, actually, my question is uh, a follow-up question, but uh, that I see many institutions are fueling the concept of Maya. Not a, again, it's not a concept as in the previous video you said. Many institutions are fueling this thing because I have seen on many premier institutions, Nahi Vidya, Pavitra Miya Vidya, Tejas Vinava Dita Mastu, or Sa Vidya Vimukte, Upanishad sent sentences are there. But mm -hmm. at its core, I believe that uh, besides some ritual, uh, there is nothing uh, sort of any meaning meaning is there in their uh, entire knowledge system. So my question is, no one is talking about truth. So unless we build one strong system for it, and I have heard that like uh, in your mind also, like there is some goal that uh, building an institution like Nalanda uh, or something like that. So. Yeah. Will you please throw some light on it and why this is happening that many institutions are just become a placement agencies and nothing more than that, be it sort of anything like many institutions are there like that. No, it's got to do with popular culture. Institutions do not lie at the root of culture. It is culture that gives rise to institutions and later on it becomes a cycle where the institution keeps reinforcing the culture but ask yourself what came first hmm? we established our institutions and when we established our institutions our institutions reflect our mindset hmm? we decide what we are going to our institutions for are you referring to institutions of higher learning or to social institutions, political institutions. I suppose you are referring to institutions dealing in education, typically professional education, right? Yes. You, you are talking about the coaching industry, you are talking about IITs and IIMs and such yeah. things, right? Exactly. Right, right, right. Now tell me if you come to know that there is uh, a recently established uh, IIM. Hmm? that guarantees no placement at all. Would you be eager to go there? Are you from, I'm Calcutta, first thing? Yeah, I'm from, I'm Jammu, third year PhD student. Okay. I'm Jammu. Right. So before you go to I am Jammu, don't you inquire about the placement scene? Yeah, for PGP students are doing it, exactly. Yeah. Yes, yes. In fact, that's also what decides the rankings of the various institutions. No, does it not? Yes. That's the ground reality. Yes. Hmm? Somebody tells you academics are you know, better, let's say, at uh, I am Bangalore, but placements are better at I am Ahmedabad. You know what you are going to put your finger on, right? Yes. So that's how it operates. Now, what can the institution uh, do? Uh, when I went to yeah, I am Ahmedabad, or was it IIT? I don't know. But at one of these places, the it was either the PGP chair or uh, the dean academics. They said, to most of you who have just landed, there are only two offices that matter: the admissions office and the placement office. Everything in between is just time pass, and that's why you don't like to attend classes. Mm? Even CGPA is just a means to clear the minimum cutoff needed for the most coveted companies. If the companies ask for 8.0 cutoff, you would want to keep it at 8.03. <laughs> or if it's 7.5, then accordingly. So it's got to do with us. What can the poor institution do? The institution comes from us. Hmm? Um, I know of uh, several great institutions where the academic uh, fraternity has even thought of uh, banishing campus placements. They have said, our role is to educate you and empower you. And once you are empowered, you go out and you seek uh, employment on your own or you start out on your own, whatever. But then there has been a great resistance from the students. The students say we have come here not just to be educated but to be employed. 
the onus is on the institution to serve us jobs on platter. It it it's got to do with the philosophy of the times. We are not students. We are wannabe consumers. Let's face it. Yes. Hmm? You do not go to an IM to be a great manager. You go to an IM to be a great consumer. Hmm? You want the best gadgets. You want to be there in New York or Chicago. You want to be an investment banker in London. Hmm? And that's the reason why you go to an IIM or to an IIT or even to any other place. And that's also the reason why you write the UPSC. You don't want to become IAS so that you may serve the country or uh, bestow your compassion on the less fortunate beings of this planet or your district. Hmm? You are there so that now your lust for consumption can be further aroused and further ingratiated. Is that not so? Yes. Yeah. So that's how. Now, what can the poor institution do? They can write Vidya Dadati Vinayam. You will say Vidya Dadati placement. Hmm? And if Vidya does not Dadati placement, then Vidya is of no use. Hmm? They might say, Ya Vidya Sa Vimuktaye. You would say, Ya Vidya Sa Placementiye. Only that is Vidya which gives you placement. So, the poor campus itself will fall on global rankings. Because the global rankings take in account the quality of intake. The moment a campus declares, I am not going to put so much emphasis on, on placements and uh, students would start boycotting the placement that the parents would start boycotting you have to ask yourself do we exist to consume hmm? when the philosophy at the ground level will change then you will find all your institutions are changing not merely ITI, I mean your political institutions the institution of the family the institution of marriage your art your science your medicine everything will change right now because at our core all we want to do is get get and get more and eat it up and get fat that's what the common man lives for hmm? so that's also what is reflected in the institutions but at the same time, something else can happen. And what is that? I'm talking about grassroots change in culture. Now, some visionary can come up with an institution specifically built to change the culture. And remember, culture is not just conditioning. Culture is not just things and concepts. You tell your kids to condition them. Culture is founded on spirituality if culture has to have any meaning if culture is not founded on spirituality then culture is just a set of principles that condition are you getting the so culture true culture founded on spirituality if an institution can nurture that then that institution will serve as the base to change reform really modernize uh, all other institutions. We require an institution of that kind and that's the reason why I talk of the university I want to build in my lifetime. Hmm? What would be the nature of that university? Where would that come from? All that is quite hazy right now. But in some sense, I have already uh, started that university, that institution in an online way. Even this that we are doing right now hmm, is a process within that university. I do not have the resources to have a huge campus and raise uh, structures of brick and mortar. Hmm. But I can talk and I can, I can create educational material. Hmm. We can write books. We can have 
video interactions. So that's what uh, our university is currently doing. Oh, one day probably it will become or it will assume visible characteristics of a mainstream university. Those characteristics it does not have now, but it is already functional in an authentic way. Yes. Thank you. Sir. Uh, hello, Jairaji. I have a follow up question to that. Uh, so, I mean, uh, as far as the higher education institutes are concerned, uh, in, it is fine that students go there for placements that is still understandable. But when we go to the grassroots levels, like, you know, our earlier schools, high schools, all those stuff. So, uh, why do we see that, you know, uh, we don't see a lot of spiritual based subjects there or spiritualism as a subject itself is not taught as part of the school curriculum. All we have is, you know, the traditional five, six subjects which keep on repeating every year. So, why is that and do you think that can change in the future? No, because there is nobody who understands the importance of that. Obviously, reflection, philosophy, life education, core spirituality, they must be there in the curricula. But then who would teach? Who would set that kind of uh, syllabus? Who would test? Who would invigilate? Who would accord the grades? You first of all need some competence to be a teacher of spirituality or life philosophy. We do not have uh, uh, those kind of people. First of all, at the level of policy making, we have been quite unfortunate. Mm. Our policy makers, when it comes to education, have been people who had no respect for spirituality. Mm. So, in the name of uh, modernity, in the name of uh, progressiveness, and also in the name of secularism, they kept spirituality just totally away from the books and minds of our young people. For them, spirituality was a taboo, something not to be touched because it is very dangerous. Why? Because they themselves were not spiritual people. So, you, you require a big change in that because India and the entire world is paying very dearly for that mistake. The problems of today can have only spiritual solutions and you have kept the young population totally oblivious of spirituality. So how will the problems of today be solved? Can you have, I, I keep asking, can you have technological solutions to something like climate change when climate change is very obviously a crisis of consumption? It is a crisis of attitudes and behaviors. It is a crisis of greed. It is a crisis of lack of compassion. It is a crisis born out of cruelty and insensitivity. How can you have technology coming up with solutions to that? Similarly, technology can give you nuclear weapons, but technology cannot give you the wisdom to avoid a nuclear war. Or can technology do that as well? Technology can give you the means to colonize another planet, but technology will not give you the love to save your own planet. The problems of today can have solutions only in spirituality and we are such foolish people we are depriving ourselves of the only help we can have we are keeping our kids our teenagers our young population away from all kinds of wisdom literature We have conflated religious dogma with spiritual wisdom. 
we do not know the difference. Now, religious dogma is obviously something we want to keep aside. It has no place in the world of today. It actually should have had no place at any time in history. But it continued. Spiritual wisdom is something totally different. The essence of the Upanishads and Gita is the only thing that can save us today. And when I say that, I do not mean to exclude other scriptures. I am talking of Vedanta as representative of all wisdom. It is an inclusive thing. Are you getting it? Our education has become very dangerously anti-life. Because life, when it comes to a human being, is about consciousness, not just biological activity. You eat, you consume, you see, you hear, you move, you breathe. That is not what we can call as the life of a human being. A human being is alive. Only if he can reflect and understand. Somebody who can't reflect, somebody who can't understand is as good as dead or is only as alive as an animal or a vegetable. Hmm? Our education is preventing us from reflecting into life, from understanding our own existence. Therefore, I am calling it anti-life. Hmm? So, I don't know whether I have answered your question. If I have not, then you may say something. I have answered it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sir, uh, this is a question regarding education. So that is something I have been uh, uh, I have been trying in many ways for my own for myself and for my family and my son as well. So previously we spoke uh, that uh, these days uh, education institutions are not life giving, but they are in fact life sucking, uh, where they where they only you know make machines out of them. So I have been uh, uh, very clearly realizing this for past for past few years. So uh, so the uh, I, uh, we spoke about educational institutions, uh, yes. but but I am also kind of finding that uh, even the institution called family is not so life giving uh, right. because uh, the people uh, in the family are also equally educated by the same institutions and they are all um, uh, kind of uh, we are, one of our friend also mentioned like energy vampires so i have i have noticed that a lot uh, then i started uh, believing that it is uh, good for the kid to be away from such institutions uh, at least for certain period so that uh, the process of self inquiry can start so I wanted to understand uh, one of the key things that have helped me for self-inquiry was travels, uh, breaking my patterns, uh, going to different uh, environments and, you know, trying to uh, live in those cultures. So I have started a journey where uh, I would take my family uh, to such uh, communities and, uh, you know, uh, break certain patterns and uh, give us the space where we can uh, explore uh, different ways of self-inquiry. So I would like to understand uh, for a quid of nine years or 10 years, how important it is uh, to not only, uh, you know, uh, help him to get out of such influences, but also how important it is for him to uh, explore him, to expose him to different environments so that self-inquiry can naturally come to him. It's quite important, very important if you expose him to different environments. But obviously, like all exposures, there has to be a deftness in the one um, uh, making the experiment or uh, uh, bringing about the exposure. Otherwise, uh, you know, exposures uh, might not help or might even uh, might even be problematic. Uh, think of. Uh, exposing your uh, soul and knee to x-rays right done rightly it assists the treatment 
done wrongly it can itself become a problem hmm? or the the exposure that you provide to the photographic film hmm, when you open the camera shutter right exposed rightly you will get a beautiful picture if there is under exposure all you will get is darkness if there is over exposure you will get a bland uh, brightness hmm? so first of all you must know the frame you must also know the shutter speed hmm? and you must uh, know the the art the skill the craft so be careful uh, uncaring and uh, un thought out exposures may not help that much we have had people who travel a lot we have professional travels we have tour guides uh, do they automatically become liberated people they don't right so it's not as if uh, exposure by itself suffices mm. there has to be constant care and attention as to what kind of exposure what is it bringing to that person and after the exposure there has to be reflection and deliberation and do talk so as to put the exposure in perspective hmm? let's say you you take the kid to a slaughter house hmm? and he gets to see how that uh, very modern and automated slaughter uh, facility is functioning it can work both ways on one hand it can help the kid realize the cruel ways of our world on the other hand it can if if not uh, put in perspective it is possible the kid starts uh, even appreciating the the fineness of automation and the sophistication of the mechanical and computer systems there think of it so uh, one has to be attentive but one thing is certain experience helps experience helps and the other thing i would want to talk of is fact the kid must know history the kid must know what is going on in the world the kid must know all the things that constitute the mind of the common man just think what is it that fills us up what is it that we are uh, so concerned about what is it that occupies tv screens what is it that most people are uh, surfing on the net it is these things that make our minds no simple right beyond our uh, genetic baggage what are we made up of there is something we bring into the world with the body and the rest of it we simply acquire from the tv screens and what we see and what we hear we must know what is it that makes us up and then the facts of those things must be very clearly brought out to the child for example religious conflict hmm? for example political ideologies why don't you start discussing a communism versus uh, capitalism with your kid marx versus smith why not in a very simplified form obviously the kid must be able to know what is going on hmm? what is for example the difference between the left and the right why not discuss it because that is what constitutes so much of the popular debate these days and it's going to continue for decades it's a very old topic hmm? so the kid must know these things and the father the mother all the well wishers the teachers the relatives the friends 
it's upon them to sit with the kid and take up these matters what does the left want what does the right want what's the difference between a leftist a socialist a communist are they one uh, are there differences you know what happened in russia what happened in france uh, what were uh, these revolutions what happened in europe in those times and if the kid can develop a de- taste for these things then this is an insurance against a lot of nonsense hmm? if the kid can start relating geography to history hmm? if the kid can uh, start uh, relating our biological tendencies with social structures uh, if if we can if, an, if he can start looking at a house and asks uh, what does this uh, tangible house of uh, bricks and cement represent in mental terms you know you have been a great father uh, the day the kid asks a question of this variety what is it in man's mind that gives rise to houses or to um, or to theaters or to schools or to hospitals you don't find these things in the jungle right so and why uh, are some houses bigger than others right why do houses have these specific rooms these specific compartments and divisions why must there be a bedroom a drawing room a kitchen how exactly have we come up with these ideas because these are not rooms these are ideas first right so what do these ideas represent in our mind what is it about us that uh, gets tangibly represented as the idea of the drawing room let's say the kid must be encouraged to ask these questions this is a drift this is a kind of cultivated habit it has to be cultivated in the beginning later on when that faculty is awakened then it becomes spontaneous for the kid but initially like a good farmer you will have to plow the field and sow the seeds if you will wait for things to happen by themselves they might take a lot of time they might not even ever happen so don't leave things to chance plow the field sow the seeds water them take care of them save them from all kinds of animals including the animal within so that's what a good father ought to ought to do i hope i'm not putting too many and too severe conditions on parenting but because uh, i uh, look at uh, the a bringing of the kid as a very very serious matter huh? love is something serious is it not hmm? therefore uh, i think parents uh, must realize that they ca- carry a tremendous responsibility hmm? see the kid there is nothing in the world that must not be discussed with the kid right india sri lanka pakistan china why not why must not the kid know the mind of uh, let's say putin why exactly did russia have to get into ukraine what's going on huh? and can now the kid relate it with uh, with the european reformation and renaissance and the general thought can the kid look at for example china and india and think of gautam buddha and acharya shankar hmm? obviously uh, it's not a clean parallel but but i'm talking of uh, free thought and free free connections when you can connect to seemingly disparate things in the mind it means that the faculty of creativity is being aroused Uh, thanks acharya yeah, i i really don't have a clear path on how i'm going to do that but i'm sure uh, i would uh, 
keep inquiring myself and also uh, help as much as possible to help him inquire um, but but this is a this is still try and testing only i'm 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 testing various things i might fail i might again figure out something else uh, but definitely a uh, lot of inputs from you is helping me thanks a lot thank you i would like to first of all extend a humble thank you gratitude on behalf of the i am calcutta i am calcutta's lit club thank you to all the participants also for bringing such great questions on the platform i think the way acharya prashant answered everything we have covered a lot of length lot of depth and breadth in all the questions right from discussing climate change to discussing self inquiry there is nothing we have not touched upon today and i hope this session proves to be an initiation for everyone to start on their journey of self inquiry again a big thank you to acharya prashant and his team and especially dr uh, chatterji for helping us and uh, helping us conduct this session smoothly thank you everyone